So my name is Lizzie Bisley. I'm the curator of modern art at Te Papa. Um, so I look after the 20th century art collections, both New Zealand art and international. I remember it always being quite exciting when the new school journal arrived. Um, and I really remember loving the stories in them. I actually don't remember the art that much, but um, the school journal was definitely a kind of a big feature of being a primary school student in New Zealand in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> so a big part of my life. So in its early years, um, the school journal was very much focused on British stories and poems and um, not local content. And then from about 1940, they started to employ local artists and local writers to produce stories and prints and drawings that were specific to here. Um, and it's a really interesting period because you get this really um, kind of vibrant generation of young artists who are working for the school journal, um, sometimes on a kind of ad hoc basis and sometimes they have a kind of more formal job. Um, and they're producing quite large bodies of work. And it's a very um, wonderful kind of flowering of a particular kind of art in New Zealand. So you get these amazing illustrators, people like E. Mervyn Taylor, who produce these huge, beautiful bodies of work for children. Um, and I think there's something so um, ideologically wonderful about that, this idea that you should be putting the best artists to work for small children. Um, but also it creates this huge um, body of work that is kind of quite significant within New Zealand's art history. So, I've, yeah, I find that period around the end of the Second World War um, really, really interesting in terms of the school journal kind of being at the forefront of what was happening with contemporary art in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's amazing, I think, about the school journal is that every child had access to it. So no matter where you lived in the country, no matter what kind of school you went to, you would be provided with the school journal. And so it does mean that kind of interesting contemporary artists, their work was being seen by children across the country, and I think that's a huge thing. Um, and there's also this sense with the school journal of a real value and weight being given to the importance of art, which I think can't but have had a big impact on those children, you know, that the artwork is being presented to them as something that is an important part of their daily lives and something that should be valued and looked at and used as inspiration for their own kind of work that they're doing. I also think there's a kind of wonderful network that's built around the school journal. So you get artists who work together and kind of develop wonderful creative relationships through the school journal. So, um, for example, Roy Cowan, who was an amazing um, potter and printmaker who worked as an art editor for the school journal from the late 40s. He met his wife, Julia Peter, because she was working there as a staff artist. And they um, got married, but they also had this kind of wonderful artistic relationship for the rest of their lives. So you get the formation of these kind of communities of artists around the school journal. Yeah, and I think in the in the kind of early period, around the end of the Second World War, there were sort of two different strands that were playing into that work, where you had. Um, a real interest in developing a national culture, which was something that um, the 1936 Labour government quite explicitly tried to do through their school curriculums and things to think about, you know, what is important and special about here and what are the stories of this place. But then at the same time, you have a lot of really deep connections with what's happening in the rest of the world. So this interest in children as the kind of building blocks of a society and the importance of nourishing children's minds and allowing them to be free thinkers and creative thinkers. This is an idea that has a lot of currency around the world in the 40s and 50s. And so the New Zealanders, the artists who were kind of contributing to the school journal, they were aware of this bigger international kind of community for these ideas and felt themselves part of that kind of um, larger picture. Mm.
it doesn't feel like it's kind of too didactic or it's trying to teach children about the importance of art in a very serious way. It's fun. It's kind of <laughs> beautiful, fun illustrations that they can engage with and have fun with and great poems that they can read and spark their own imaginations. It's all kind of quite joyful um, and it doesn't feel like you're trying to teach them things in a very serious way, but at the same time you're giving them access to this amazing body of of writing and drawing and painting that they might not otherwise see. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that thing about not talking down to children is really important in the sense of, you know, the work that these artists and writers were doing was, you know, it's not in any way seen as lesser than the other work that they're doing. It's kind of on a level playing field with everything else that they're doing in their practice. And I think that's really important, you know, that that kids can understand complicated things, can look at a beautiful print and see a world within it. And, you know, we should meet them at a higher place <laughs> and let them explore.